and who coined the term uh, receptor the paul ehrlich in 1909 he coined the word and aj clark is important person who proposed the theory of drug action so he mentioned that the drug binds to the uh, receptor and forms a complex and how he proposed it is based on the law of mass action so the drug receptor interaction so what he said is the drug binds to the receptor and forms a complex like drug receptor complex and which elicits a biological response so this particular com concept was given by aj clark based on the law of mass action now for the drug receptor interactions there is a different two terms have been involved one is the affinity or second one is the intrinsic activity or efficacy so these terms are very important for the drug to produce the therapeutic response and also there will be a few terminologies which i am going to discuss in the coming slides like agonist antagonist inverse agonist so those uh, things are decided based on these two concept so what do you mean by affinity affinity is the ability of a drug to form the complex with its receptors a simple uh, anecdote is like for example the key is here which is a drug molecule like either hormone or neurotransmitter and then the receptor is a lock here okay so when a key is able to fit into the lock that is called affinity so similarly a drug has the ability to bind to the receptors just the binding alone that is called the what the affinity and then the second concept is intrinsic activity or efficacy which is the most important part for a drug molecule so it is once you insert the key and if you try to open then it is a efficacy is good or the intrinsic activity is good and so we call that as a agonist so ability of the drug after binding to the receptor whether it is able to produce a response that is called the efficacy or intrinsic activity so these two are very important for a drug molecule so a agonist is a drug that occupies the receptor and produces a cellular response so for example primary ligand okay it binds to the its own receptors on the cell surface and producing the response similarly agonist okay so what do you mean by the antagonist a drug that occupies a receptor it does not activate the receptors for example if you go back to that lock and key mechanisms the key is fitting into the uh, lock and when you try to open it does not open so this is called the antagonist so it just goes and occupies the space or blocks the space so that it will not allow the agonist molecule to uh, produce its effect so an antagonist if you see here it just comes and binds to the receptor it just simply occupies the space it does not allow the agonist to come and bind to produce the therapeutic effects so hence the antagonist you are just going to blocks the response of the agonist so there are two terms again here reversible antagonist and irreversible antagonist what do you mean by that when the antagonist binds to the site of uh, the receptor okay they blocks for a, a period of time okay a certain time and then they get dissociated from the receptor site and then the receptors will be free for the further agonist to bind okay so this is called a reversible antagonist for example reversible antagonist see like uh, this is the antagonist the green color is the antagonist the yellow bit is the agonist so when the antagonist comes and binds here it is going to block the response of the agonist because it will not allow the agonist to bind suppose if you increase the concentration of the agonist what happens it is a competitive type so the uh, the agonist molecule is more now it will displace the antagonist and come and bind here to produce the response so this is what the reversible antagonist can be o is the one which can be overcome by adequate concentration of agonist at the receptor site so what about irreversible antagonist any time any anywhere if there is a term called irreversible whether it is a enzyme or the receptor that means that, that particular drug molecule is bind bound to the receptor or the enzyme in a covalent bond covalent bond is the strongest bond as we know so once it bounds to the enzyme or receptor the receptor as well as the drug at that antagonist completely has to get destroyed and the new enzyme or the receptors has to be generated for the agonist to bind 
This is what meant by irreversible antagonist. Even if you increase the concentration of the agonist, there is no go, it's not going to be useful. So partial agonist is one, an agonist which even at full receptor occupancy, okay, cannot elicit a response equal to that of a full agonist. So what I said, full agonist means it will bind to the receptors completely and then maximal therapeutic effect it produces. But here it cannot produce the maximal therapeutic effect, the sub-maximal only it can produce. So otherwise it can be called as a mixed agonist antagonist. And the fourth term is called inverse agonist. Here it is agonist, does not mean that it is going to produce the response. But inverse there is a word added that means it binds to the receptor but it produces the effect opposite to that of the agonist. For example, beta carbolin which binds to the benzodiazepine receptors, the GABA receptors. Normally when you buy benzodiazepine binds, what happens? It causes the CNS depressants, depression of the central nervous system. But similarly, the, it is maybe used as anticonvulsant, sedative, hypnotics like that. But here the beta carbolin which is inverse agonist, they bind to the same side but it can produce convulsions and uh, the exact effect opposite to that produced by the agonist. Okay. So in the receptor theory, there is one important concept. So the drug, we have seen that agonist, antagonist, uh, so many terminologies and the drug, how it binds, reversible, irreversible and so many concepts we have seen. But for a, when a drug molecule agonist binds to the receptor, the response can be measured in terms of quantity, right? So for that, the magnitude of the response, okay, how will you measure? It is basically proportional to the number of drug receptor interactions that occur. For example, at a one particular receptor site, you have got 100 receptors are there, for example. Let's say, for example, if it is a heart and particularly the two receptors is uh, or maybe even beta 1 receptors is present. So 100 receptors are present and we are giving a particular drug to increase the uh, uh, decrease the heart rate. For example, beta agonist. What, uh, what happens? The uh, for example, 100 milligram of the drug you are giving. So this is for imaginary purpose only I am telling. So 100 molecules of the drug consider like that. So at least 80 percent of the receptors. So I told you 100 receptors are there, 100 molecules of the drug are there. So at least 80 molecules, that is drug molecules should bind to the 80 receptors to produce the maximal response. If any less than that, the response will be decreased, that is the efficacy will come down.